IDW Sonic Imposter Syndrome, Issue 4. We see a flashback to the onset of the Metal Virus arc, where Starline asks Eggman about all of his theme parks because all of the resources for them could be used more economically. Why well, have more than one theme park anyways? Eggman says he just does what he wants, and Starline shows he's failed to learn to be not like Eggman by the present day, by still finding that inspiring. What was the point of that flashback? Starline wastes time with the motivational speech, he wastes more time asking his henchmen if they're ready, as I hate the black in front of Kit's eyes. If it's supposed to be Shadow, it should just look like his fur, but darker. So they go ahead and do stuff, with Kit catching something with water tails and throwing it. At least the lack of dialogue for a while means it's faster and easier to review and read it. It's boring to see the egg hammer because we already saw a bunch of those. Surge defeats it by spin dashing into it from a high above and not getting hurt because she has rings. And one of them's told to keep drawing fire so that there's such a distraction that Eggman doesn't realize his systems are being compromised. I feel like I've seen this plot before. I guess I like that Kit can put his water tails around Surge's chest to be dragged along by him. They're probably somewhat icy, so that's where the solid in them comes from. Then I see Orbot and Cubot wondering if they're gonna get in trouble with Eggman for going on vacation without his permission. Why are they going back to him at all? They talk like they have free will. They have the free will to decide to go on a vacation in the first place. I guess they assume no one would hire them and if they talk to anybody, he'll find out where they are and go to them, so... They'd be less likely to get in trouble if they just go to him. I wish they just said that then. I feel bad for them, I don't want them to have to work for Eggman. He can make another Warbot and Cubot. At the time of this recording, I skipped the issues in the regular IDW comic to get to issue 4 of Imposter Syndrome. I really hope we see their vacation in those issues. If not, that's just lazy and disappointing. I was interested in seeing what exactly they do, like a bunch of free robots getting to go around and do stuff. What could they do? They don't have any money. Or about lies that they're just gathering information. Predictably, Eggman doesn't care and tells them to log back in. Eggman gets shown a visual of who's causing the damage. Why do we need to see this? This is padding. Surge says Sonic just isn't trying to win. Well, he's not gonna kill Eggman, so she's right. She gets grabbed by Metal Sonic and is just glad for a challenge. Eventually she gets smacked on the floor and of course she has a hard time because she has a black shield to put up. He probably puts it up at faster than the speed of sound. How does she have the time to ask him if he wants to be the real Sonic before grabbing his hands? She says he doesn't have the heart or soul. Why would she say this when she hates Sonic, so she wouldn't respect his heart or soul, and wouldn't think that an evil robot would want his heart or soul? Kit's water tails throw Surge in the air so that she can attack Metal, who eventually gets grabbed by the water tails and surrounded in a bubble. She should know robots can't be drowned, though. I guess she assumes he's not waterproof on the inside. She shocks the water he's in, and fortunately she asks Kit how his head is. Why does Eggman think Sonic shows any respect? Then even though the program's only half uploaded, Starling still wastes time going on a Skype call with Eggman and offending him with his smugness. Did he really need to make sure Eggman knew he took over his robots? Isn't he being recklessly early? It's just a shame Starling's not a good guy in any way. I can't help but root for him because Eggman deserves this. It's satisfying to see Orbot and Cubot be taken over by him. They want Eggman confined to his quarters. Of course, I giggle when I see how short they are compared to Eggman. And Eggman effortlessly deals with them. I get to see Eggman as a menacing, competent villain here. Starline wants to go to his new seat of power. And Orbot and Cubot bow to him. I can't help but not like how their eyes are a different color, though. He leaves it to them to transmit the override code across the Eggnet. Then after he wastes time bragging, he asks Cubot what happens to him. I don't know if it's just from curiosity or genuine compassion, but either way, I think I like that he asks what happened to him. He gets told that Eggman escaped through his personal chute to the Memorial Garage. Starline says it's perfectly manageable, confidently. Starline says he could always take over whatever Eggman finds, and says to send a detachment to send him into custody, as Eggman is standing in front of giant mechas. Surge says he wants Kit to eventually reprogram all of the badniks to self-destruct. I guess the reason they have a self-destruct mechanism in the first place is 
Just in case Eggman really wants to destroy them all because they've been... But why would he waste perfectly good robots by self-destructing them if he can even get to their programming to tell them to self-destruct? Why won't he just reprogram them to not go after him? I mean, if every single robot could just self-destruct whenever they wanted, why don't any of them grab onto Sonic and blow them up like Metal Sonic did to Antoine? How can reprogramming a robot let them self-destruct? Make their wires overheat too much from sending too much energy through them at once? But wouldn't they just run out of battery? Then she changes her mind and says that she wants to get to destroy some of them herself. She says that if Sonic shows up alone, they'll fight him together, but if Tails is there, it's up to Kit to fight him. Even though Tails is afraid of lightning and Sonic's afraid of drowning in water. Sure is stupid of Starline to give the two of them the wrong powers to deal with their rivals. You'd think it'd just take one Google search or search on the Eggnet to find out what Sonic and Tails are most afraid of. So I hope he did that, and that's why I knew to give them those powers. Cause that'd make him look smart, instead of just getting lucky. The story ends with Surge saying she wants to topple every city that threw Sonic a parade. So are we ever gonna learn what they used to be? I'm already fed up with them hating Sonic, and by now it's unacceptable since they know it was only caused by brainwashing. I don't know if it's realistic for them to still act like that or not. I just find it frustrating, because it could have caused her to learn her lesson. This issue by Ian Flynn was literally just about Starline, Surge, and Kit taking over a base of Eggman's again. There's no big reveal that the whole arc was building up to where we find out who those two used to be. Starline said he can't erase memories, and he has to keep editing them, so they would find out eventually anyways, so you'd think that the arc would really end off with something climactic and memorable, where they finally do remember. It'd be really lazy if we never found out what they used to be. Since Surge knows she was just brainwashed into wanting to destroy Sonic, it's more boring and annoying than ever that she still insists on trying to do it for no reason when that's just what Starline wants. I wanted the arc to end with them finding out who they used to be. But it does make sense that Starline wouldn't have cared enough to put on record and been smart enough not to. They have to encounter people who used to know them. And they're not in a position to do that when the next thing they had to do this issue was invade a base. Why did invading a base have to take up the whole issue? I could have assumed that Starline would end up taking over another base. Even if he takes over the whole empire, it'll just be way too temporary anyways. I feel like I never even read the whole arc. It's not fulfilling to not learn who they used to be. It just ends with them still working for Starline and still wanting to fight Sonic because status quo. I'm worried that she'll always want to fight Sonic and his friends because that's probably how he was always going to keep writing Scourge, even though evil twins are a cliche concept. And there's already tons of other villains out there that'll always fight and hate Sonic and be one-dimensional city destroyers. While the backstories of these two at least has room for redemption if they find out they weren't always bad guys. If they used to be criminals anyways, which is actually what I'm assuming in a worst case scenario kind of assumption. If they, if they were always criminals, that wouldn't be a plot twist because it wouldn't cause them to do anything differently if they found out about it. I feel like I didn't even read this issue at all because it didn't, because it didn't lead up to any sort of reveal 